Hi everyone, in today's video we'll be going over a grasshopper script that allows us to create this type of waffle structure floor. Now this is uh, a rendered one, but if I go here and show you what we were able to create, we have basically the overall size that we can change. Um, and we'll have the ability to also play around with some of these parameters, which is going to be to offset and create a bigger or smaller waffles uh, set there. And then here we have fill it to round off the edges here. At the end, we have the slab thickness, which is going to give us the height here. And at the end, the floor slab. So all of these steps I'll go over here. Um, if you have questions, let me know, and I'll, I will have a script in the description. So make sure to check that out if you have any issues. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to bring in a rectangle component. And then here, we're gonna plug in the X and the Y. And I want it to be a 30 by 30 foot uh, rectangle. So I'll just go 30 here. And then we'll plug in, in the X and the Y. But since I'm in inches here, so let's go to units and I'll show you. Oh, actually millimeters. So let's go to inches and then feet and inches here. And now what we're going to do is turn this into feet. So 30, and then I'll do a times. So multiplication 12. And what it'll do is it'll convert it. So 30 times 12, and that'll give us our X and Y. So we can have a large 30 foot uh, rectangle or square. So what we'll do here is we'll do a uh, boundary surfaces, which will now give us that plane. And so what we're going to do now is subdivide this to create that waffle uh, structure. So to do that, we're going to take this and subdivide it using isotrim. In isotrim, you also bring in another component called divide domain squared which is going to give us our UMV count. Now we automatically have a 10 and 10. So if I plug this into domain surface here, and then the surface into the domain here, you'll see that now we have this subdivided in 10 in the X and 10 in the Y. Uh, we still have the ability to increase and decrease the size of it here. So that's why I made it parametric. One of the things is you could also bring in a plane yourself um, and then set one plane and subdivide it also. Uh, but this is a way for you to have it fully parametric. Uh, okay, cool. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and disable the preview on this boundary surface so we don't have two overlapping. And what we're going to do now is offset these curves in. So let's go here and offset. So we're going to use offset curve. And now we're going to take all of these surfaces and I plug in as soon as I plug it into the curve, you'll see that they'll offset, but they're offsetting out. So if you wanted to offset the opposite direction, we'll go to a negative component. So I'll just go to negative. And now I can say I want a six inch offset to the inside. So six tur um, turns into negative six, and that's the distance that we'll plug in here. So this is how quickly you can kind of offset it and get started on creating a waffle structure with just the basics here in uh, Grasshopper. So we don't really need to download any plugins or anything. We're just using uh, the default components that come with the program. Um, so, so far we're doing pretty good, but the next thing is going to be to round off the edges, right? And create a plane in between these two. So if we just take this and this one, there's gonna be a component called region difference that will subtract this inside one from the outside one. So let's put curves A here, curves B here. Okay, so when you do plug in the region difference and you plug in your isotrimmed into the A, and your offsets into the B, make sure you graft your A so they come in organized in the same way and you have here at the end uh, your result, which is going to now be the space in between here. So let's actually go ahead and do a boundary surface and go ahead and plug this into here and we'll see that, yes, um, 
it was subtracted and now we have the ability to pick our thickness here um, now uh, so so far we got this pretty good but if let's say we wanted to round off the edges here so that's something that we could do you can take this curve the inside one and do a fillet and this one's a fillet the sharp, sharp corner we'll plug this one into the curve we can give it a radius of around three and now notice that these are going to be our new parametric rounded off curves that we are going to over we're going to basically uh, override the b and now you'll see that that should be working so now we have the ability also to create that rounded off um, fillet uh, corner Cool. So the other thing that I was going to mention to everyone is uh, if you're not displaying the information like I am, one of the things you might want to do is go to display and have all of the draw icons, draw fancy wires and draw full names. That way you can kind of have this being displayed the same way that I have it here. But that's kind of a different issue. So here we have this these planes. Let's go ahead and extrude. So we're going to extrude this in which direction? Well, we know we want to go vertically. So we'll go to in the Z direction. It's gonna go up by one. So let's go ahead and just bring in a slider of six. Boom. There we go. There's our start to our waffle structure. Now, I do know that I want at the top, I do want a thin slab. Um, so what we'll do is We'll actually take all of these isotrim surfaces and we're going to move them vertically right so we'll take all of these move them vertically by six which is the same amount as how much we extrude right so now we have this top one and this one we're going to also extrude so i'll do extrude which geometry this geometry in which direction z vertically and now we can pick um let's say four inches like a four inch um, floating slab here um, now these are all uh, separate pads if you did want it to be all put together one way is going to be to join this B rep, right? And then extrude that, right? So we we do have the creases, which will look nice because um, they have the subdivisions in the same way as the waffle. But now we don't have all these planes in between that are really not necessary, right? So let's go ahead and take this middle click, disable preview. And here we have our waffle slab at the top. Um, now, the other thing is we have the subdivision in the U and the V as 10 and 10. We could decrease the subdivisions of the slabs too. So that's another uh, way to play around with the aspect ratio of um, your design here. So the waffle slab is going to be here, the bottom one, and then we can extrude this out to like 12. So I'll actually do a maximum here of 20 and I'll go here to 12. And here we have that waffle parametric structure that we can always round off the edges a little bit more and play around even with the size, right? The offset this is going to be a critical one because we can go here to like six and make them really, you know, beefy or make them a little bit lighter here. So what I'm going to do is take this and um, so we can Boolean union and put this all together. And what we can do is also create a multi floor slab, but that's not really the point of this uh, tutorial. The point of this one was for you to see how you can create this. Um, and then later on, I can show you guys how to incorporate this into, you know, a series of levels uh, of floors and stuff. So uh, 
I think this is good for now. If you do have any questions, make sure to let me know. I'll have this in the description for you to check out. Um, yeah, like I said, ask me any questions and uh, I appreciate you coming by and watching and I hope to see you next time.